Why are teeth important? Teeth help us eat. Teeth help us talk. Teeth are a part of who we are. Smile! We have four different types of teeth in our mouth. First are our incisors. They are the front four teeth in our mouth on the top and the bottom. The incisors help us with biting into foods. We use our incisors to bite into things like apples and sandwiches. Our canines are next to our incisors. These teeth are used for biting and tearing. After our canines are our premolars and molars. These teeth are used for chewing up our food after we've taken those bites out of it. It's important to remember that our teeth are a living part of our body. There's a strong, hard outside layer called the enamel. Under that is the dentin, which is a little softer layer. And inside of that is the pulp cavity, where the nerves and blood vessels are. There are five important things you can do to take care of your teeth. Brush two times a day for two minutes each time. Floss one time a day. Eat healthy foods. Drink lots of water. And visit the dentist two times a year for a checkup. You can keep cavities away. Why do we need to brush our teeth? Let's take a closer look. Germs are everywhere. There are germs that live in your mouth. Some are helpful and some can hurt your teeth. Germs have many names like bacteria, plaque, and sometimes they are called sugar bugs. Beware of the acid attack. The bacteria that stick to our teeth take the foods that we eat and drink and they create acid with it. These germs love sugary, sweet foods and drinks and foods with carbohydrates like chips and crackers. The more of these things we eat, the more acid will be on our teeth. The acid, when it sits on our strong healthy teeth, softens and weakens them and that's how we get cavities. When a team of archaeologists recently came across some 15,000 year old human remains, they made an interesting discovery. The teeth of those ancient humans were riddled with holes. Their cavities were caused by the same thing that still plagues us today, specific tiny microbes that live in our mouths. These microbes are with us soon after birth. We typically pick them up as babies from our mother's mouths. And as our teeth erupt, they naturally begin to accumulate communities of bacteria. Depending on what we eat, and specifically how much sugar we consume, certain microbes can overpopulate and cause cavities. Diets high in sugary foods cause an explosion of bacteria called mutans streptococci in our mouths. Like humans, these microorganisms love sugar, using it as a molecular building block and energy source. As they consume it, the bacteria generate byproducts in the form of acids, such as lactic acid. The mutans streptococci are resistant to this acid, but unfortunately, our teeth aren't. While each human tooth is coated in a hardy, protective layer of enamel, it's no match for acid. That degrades the armor over time, leaching away its calcium minerals. Gradually, acid wears down a pathway for bacteria into the tooth's secondary layer called the dentin. Since blood vessels and nerves in our teeth are enclosed deep within, at this stage, the expanding cavity doesn't hurt. But if the damage extends beyond the dentin, the bacterial invasion progresses, causing excruciating pain as the nerves become exposed. Without treatment, the whole tooth may become infected and require removal, all due to those sugar-loving bacteria. The more sugar our food contains, the more our teeth are put at risk. Those cavemen would hardly have indulged in sugary treats, however. So what caused their cavities? In meat-heavy diets, there would have been a low risk of cavities developing because lean meat contains very little sugar. But that's not all our early human ancestors ate. Cavemen would also have consumed root vegetables, nuts, and grains, all of which contain carbohydrates. When exposed to enzymes in the saliva, carbohydrates get broken down into simpler sugars which can become the fodder for those ravenous mouth bacteria. 
So while ancient humans did eat less sugar compared to us, their teeth were still exposed to sugars. That doesn't mean they were unable to treat their cavities, though. Archaeological remains show that about 14,000 years ago, humans were already using sharpened flint to remove bits of rotten teeth. Ancient humans even made rudimentary drills to smooth out the rough holes left behind, and beeswax to plug cavities, like modern-day fillings. Today, we have much more sophisticated techniques and tools, which is fortunate because we also need to contend with our more damaging, sugar-guzzling ways. After the Industrial Revolution, the human incidence of cavities surged because suddenly we had technological advances that made refined sugar cheaper and accessible. Today, an incredible 92% of American adults have had cavities in their teeth. Some people are more susceptible to cavities due to genes that may cause certain weaknesses, like softer enamel. But for most, high sugar consumption is to blame. However, we have developed other ways of minimizing cavities besides reducing our intake of sugar and starch. In most toothpastes and many water supplies, we use tiny amounts of fluoride. That strengthens teeth and encourages the growth of enamel crystals that build up a tooth's defenses against acid. When cavities do develop, we use tooth fillings to fill and close off the infected area, preventing them from getting worse. The best way to avoid a cavity is still cutting down on sugar intake and practicing good oral hygiene to get rid of the bacteria and their food sources. That includes regular toothbrushing, flossing, and avoiding sugary, starchy, and sticky foods that cling to your teeth between meals. Gradually, the population of sugar-loving microbes in your mouth will decline. Unlike the cavemen of yesteryear, today we have the knowledge required to avert a cavity calamity. We just need to use it. This presentation shows the importance of brushing and flossing our teeth. This mega block represents our teeth and gums. I have bits of Play-Doh. Orange Play-Doh will represent the germs that stick to our teeth. These germs can be called bacteria. Sometimes they're called sugar bugs. Plaque is a group of these germs that get together and plaque sticks to our teeth and does not come off of our teeth until we brush and floss it away. Plaque takes the food that it finds in our mouth after we eat and drink things and plaque loves sugary sweet foods. So these food particles hide everywhere in our mouth as well. And when the plaque eats those food particles up, it makes acid with them. Acid, when it sits on our teeth for a long time, can cause cavities. So we want to make sure that we are removing the food particles and plaque from our teeth daily. When we brush, we want to brush for at least two minutes. We're going to brush in tiny circles. We want to tilt our toothbrush down towards the gum line. When we brush, we're going to jiggle those germs off of our teeth. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Do the inside. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Brush your chewing surface. Circular motions. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle those germs off your teeth. And as you can see, when I'm finished brushing, there is still food and germs left between our teeth. This is why it is so important to floss our teeth. Many dentists recommend that children use flossers instead of the string floss because it's much easier to get the flosser and hold the flosser in between your teeth, whereas the string floss, you have to wrap it around and reach way in the back. When we floss, I have a flosser here that has some black floss on it to help you see it against my white teeth. The flosser, when we floss, we want to push that flosser up against those teeth so it hugs the tooth. We're not just putting it down in here and going up and down. We actually want to hug that tooth. Wipe that floss against the side of that tooth. Take those germs out of there. And then to get this other chewing surface, we're going to, I mean, in between our teeth we're going to wipe that floss hug against the tooth again pull towards your tooth wipe that out of there clean your flosser between each tooth so that you know you're getting food and plaque away from your teeth and you're not sticking it back in between your teeth so you want to clean that off and then continue flossing until it is clean in that area you want to make sure that you are cleaning all of the food and plaque out of there so clean in between each set of teeth. There's some more food or germs. So we want to make sure that we are cleaning that out of there. 
and cleaning our flosser off each time we clean. So once we have cleaned between all of our teeth, you can see that now our teeth are clean. This is why it is important to brush and floss every day. What size toothbrush should I use? There are different sizes? Yes. It's important to use a toothbrush that fits your size mouth. So when we're smaller, it's important to use a smaller size toothbrush. If we try to brush our teeth with a larger size toothbrush that doesn't fit in our mouth very well, it's going to be more difficult to reach the areas where plaque is hiding. Remember, using a smaller size toothbrush makes it easier to reach way back where plaque is hiding on your teeth. Also, notice that electric toothbrushes that are made for adults always have the smaller size heads on them because it's much easier to get plaque off our teeth when we use a toothbrush that fits in our mouth nice and easy. What are some healthy foods you can enjoy? Fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, things filled with protein like eggs and nuts, and dairy products like cheese and milk are all great healthy foods for your teeth. Ruthie Lauren says, Bacteria can't make as much acid from healthy foods. Another important thing you can do to take care of your teeth is drink lots of water. Water has no sugar. Water washes food and acid off of your teeth. And water gives you energy and helps us grow. Visit the dentist every six months for a checkup. Let's talk candy. Bacteria love living in a sugar-rich environment. They grow in numbers and can make more acid when there is more sugar. Sour candies are very acidic and the acid eats away at the enamel of your teeth. Sour candies are some of the worst candies for your teeth. Chewy and sticky candies are also very harmful to teeth. Toothy Mare says chocolate is a much better choice than sticky, chewy, or acidic candies. Chocolate melts away without sticking to teeth. The Power of Sour this is the tooth of an 11-year-old boy with severe erosion from chewing and sucking on sour candy regularly. What you can do. Limit or stop eating sour candies. Don't suck or chew candies for long periods of time. If you eat sour candy, drink milk or eat cheese afterwards to stop the acids. Drink water after that. Chew sugar-free gum. This produces saliva, which protects your teeth. After eating sour candy or other acidic foods or drinks, wait one hour before brushing your teeth. Brushing right away increases the harmful effects of acid on teeth. Talk to your dentist about eating candy. How much sugar is in one bottle of orange soda? Let's do the math. Four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon of sugar. So if there are 80 grams of sugar in this soda, we divide that by four to find out that there are 20 teaspoons of sugar. What does that look like? 20 teaspoons? Children seven to 10 years old should only have 25 grams or six teaspoons of sugar a day. The amount of sugar in this soda is more than three times greater than the amount they should have in a day. I'm going to count out 20 teaspoons of sugar. Teaspoons of sugar. 
It's important to know how much sugar is in the things that we eat and drink, but don't forget to look at the serving size. This bottle of soda has two and a half servings. With 31 grams of sugar per serving, let's calculate how much sugar that is. 31 grams of sugar times two and a half servings equals 77 and a half grams of sugar. Divide that by four and that's almost 20 teaspoons of sugar. Beware of sports drinks. Sports drinks contain sugar and acid which can lead to cavities. Water is good for everyone. Toothy Kathy says, remember, our bodies are about 70% water. When we exercise, we lose water by sweating. Drinking water is how we stay hydrated. Water is the way to go. reading labels of sugary cereals. How much sugar is in one serving of cereal? Look at the nutrition facts on your cereal to find out how much sugar is in it. On this label, one cup is equal to 12 grams of sugar. Divide 12 by 4 and that tells us there are 3 teaspoons of sugar per serving. Toothy Lauren says, that's half of your total sugar for the day. Watch out! These bowls have more than one serving. Does a one cup serving of cereal look like the picture on the cereal box? No. Be aware of how much cereal you're actually eating. If you're eating more than a serving size, you're eating more than 12 grams of sugar. What are some sneaky healthy foods? Sometimes we might think a food is healthy for our teeth, but it isn't. Like dried fruit. Dried fruit is sticky and contains a lot of sugar, so it's very harmful to our teeth. Smoothies can be a good healthy snack if you're making them at home with fresh fruits, but if you're going somewhere to purchase that smoothie, chances are it's made with sugar-filled fruit syrup. Juice contains a lot of sugar. Beware of juices made from citrus fruits because they contain sugar and acid. Fruit snacks are very sticky and stick to our teeth, so they can be harmful as well. Health drinks be careful how much sugar is in there, check the label, and sometimes they even add acid too. Diet soda doesn't have sugar, but it contains acid, and it's just as harmful to our teeth as regular soda. Beware of granola, because usually it has dried fruits that stick to our teeth. Sometimes granola bars have as much sugar in them as a candy bar. And be careful to notice how much sugar is in the yogurt that you choose. Some yogurts are loaded with sugar. Make sure you choose a low sugar alternative. We need to protect our teeth. Our teeth are tools which help us talk, chew, and smile. We need to make sure that we're not doing things that can hurt our teeth. What are some activities that can hurt our teeth? Opening things with them, chewing on pencils, chewing on ice, having drinks loaded in sugar and acid, or tearing open packages. As you get older, stay away from using tobacco products. Studies show that smoking, vaping, and chewing tobacco can lead to early tooth loss and gum disease. That means you're more likely to lose your permanent teeth. We don't want that to happen, so make sure to protect your teeth. Do you play sports? If you play football, baseball, soccer, karate, or any sports with other people, you may need to wear a mouth guard to protect your teeth. Ask your dentist about using a mouth guard. Mouth guards protect your lips, tongue, cheeks, and reduces chances of chipped or broken teeth, nerve damage to a tooth, or tooth loss. Step one, use a bit of toothpaste. Not much, a pea-sized amount will do. Step two, start brushing your back teeth and molars. Brush the outside of your upper and lower teeth 
Hold the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle. Movements should be gentle and short, brushing the teeth from top to bottom and from bottom to top. You could also move the toothbrush in small circular motions. Step 3. Brush the inside of your upper and lower teeth. Remember to reach and clean back molars too. Step 4. Brush the chewing surfaces with back and forth motions. Step 5. Now you should clean the rest of your mouth. Brush gently inside of your cheeks and your tongue. Step 6. Spit out any excess toothpaste and rinse. 